Breaking right now, a gun threat at Lincoln High School in Warren. A student arrested after resource officers made a startling find. A live report just minutes away. Rain moving through on Storm Tracker 4. Just how much we're going to get, as the local forecasters say, we might see some slick roads before all said and done. Accused Oxford High School school shooter Ethan Crumley back in court today will show you exactly what happened. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we're going to start here at 5 with the newest coronavirus numbers that have just come into us from the state. 28,458 new cases reported over the past two days. The average out right now, 14,000 cases a day. That, we note, is down significantly from last week. But 350 more Michiganders have died from COVID, including 282 coming from a vital records review. And the rise in the seven day moving average is starting to slow down ever so slightly, but it is still not good news. 14 days ago, we were averaging 8,400 cases per day. Today, that average is more than 16,000. Despite the small improvement, the numbers still remain at the highest they've been since the start of the pandemic. So let's get some insight from our Dr. Frank Lee George with more. Doc? Yeah, you know, Kim and Devin, 14,000 cases a day is absolutely no reason to celebrate. That is still a crazy high number. But, of course, it's definitely better than last week's 20,000 cases a day. I will say, based on the trend from Monday to today, we're hopefully beginning to see at least a plateau in new cases. And I'm trying to be an optimist. Maybe we're even seeing a little decrease in the Omicron spike, although I'd probably hold out until Friday's numbers to even take a stab at that. I want to give the big picture, though. Hospitalizations, which, of course, lag new cases, are definitely still a real problem because it's limiting our ability to care for other things. So we really have not made our way out of the woods yet or really even to the edge of the woods. Here's one other thing. There is one ray of hope. Although hospitalizations have trended up with Omicron, Deaths so far really have not, although I will say, as we've said in the past, deaths lag new cases by two to three weeks. But so far, deaths have not increased proportionately to the number of new cases. And frankly, we can only hope it remains that way. Yeah, so maybe we can see the edge of the woods. All right, Doc. Now, as the Omicron variant surge continues, the White House is taking new steps to try to help keep children in school and increase testing capacity. That's right. The government will provide 10 million more COVID tests to K through 12 schools per month, doubling testing capacity over last November. The nation now averaging three quarters of a million new COVID cases per day. Federal officials so far have stopped short of recommending people upgrade to high filtration masks, but the advice remains clear. Any mask is better than no mask. We do encourage um, all Americans to wear a well-fitting mask to protect themselves and prevent the spread of COVID-19, um, and that recommendation is not going to change. After working with Pfizer, the government now expects to have enough doses of its antiviral pill to treat 10 million people by the end of June instead of September. All right, more on the coronavirus coming up during this 90 minutes of news. But now we need to get to breaking news that is happening right now in Warren. That's where a student has been arrested after a gun magazine was discovered. Let's get to Mara McDonald. She's live at the high school tonight with more. Mara. Hi, Kimberly. I spoke to the mother of the student who was on the receiving end of this gun threat. Let me show you. Warren police swarmed Lincoln High after the administration was made aware of the threat. Tenille Davis says she knows exactly what that threat was yep. because her daughter called her hysterical. She was crying, so I just flew here. And when I got here, they had her in the office, but then they brought the boy down. And I'm not seeing it, but this is this has been going on for a minute. She was the one who a 16 year old boy allegedly threatened to harm. He told her that he would pistol whip her. That's what he said. He said it'll be blood all over here. And the boy already got a tether on his leg. Davis says this is not the first go round her daughter has had with this boy that she had called and demanded they not be in any classes together, but they still were. When police got to the scene within minutes, that 16 year old boy was taken into custody. But so far, no weapon has been found, despite Davis's daughter seeing a pistol as well as another student. What police say has been found is an empty magazine. I just pulled three of my kids out of there. I, they're going to be online. I'm not messing with that school anymore. 
Back here alive, we just saw a Royal Oak police uh, cruiser show up with a dog in it, uh, likely going through the school trying to find any sort of remnants of a gunpowder or, or anything that would show where if there is a pistol in here. Two students say they saw it, but so far police have not been able to find it. We're live in Warren tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. We'll stay on it. All right, Mara. The accused in the Oxford school shooting, Ethan Crumbly, appeared in court today as his case entered a new phase. Crumbly was arraigned in circuit court as the case is now set to head to trial. Defender Sean Lay live tonight to help walk us through what happened, Sean. That's a good way of putting it, Kimberly. Let's get everyone up to speed on the Oxford school shooting. And Ethan Crumley could have gone to court today in circuit court and pled guilty. And then a sentencing date would have been set for him. Instead, a not guilty plea was entered for him, meaning this case is now headed for a trial. Good afternoon, Mr. Crumbly. Mr. Crumbly, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. After a 37 minute delay this afternoon, the case of Ethan Crumley has now officially moved to Oakland County Circuit Court, where Crumley will be put on trial as an adult charged with committing the Oxford High School shooting, taking the lives of Tate Meir, Hannah St. Juliana, Justin Schilling, and Madison Baldwin, and injuring many others. Today, aside from telling the judge that he could hear him, Crumley said nothing. Today's hearing was an arraignment on charges of murder terrorism, assault, and gun crimes. Crumley's attorney speaking for the team. I would waive the formal reading, stand my client mute, ask that a not guilty plea be entered. As you can see, Crumley remains held without bond, his parents being held on $500,000 bonds. They're facing involuntary manslaughter charges for allegedly providing Crumley with the weapon and ignoring red flags leading up to the shooting. Judge Kwame Rowe alerting prosecutors and lawyers on this remote hearing that Oakland County has spiking levels of COVID cases. Crumley's defense wants in-person hearings, but they will have to wait. This hearing was over in four minutes. Everyone have a great day. Very quick hearing indeed as this case now heads toward trial. You saw Judge Rowe there. He reminded everyone in the court that he's a former prosecutor and he got agreements from everyone involved in the case that they're okay with that. They see him as impartial and not having any conflicts as he handles the Ethan Crumbly case. Kimberly, Devin, back to you. Sean, Ethan Crumbly, he, he's still being held. Is he still in the Oakland County Jail then? Still being uh, charged as an adult, still being held in the Oakland County Jail, not Children's Village. His parents are also in the very same jail, but they are not to have any contact with one another. Yeah. Okay, Sean, thank you. Well, uh, thankfully, we've uh, got some warmer temperatures today after that frigid start to the week. Yeah, but we're kind of moving along that uh, rain snow fault line right now. Let's get over to Paul Gross with a look at what's coming our way. Paul? Yeah, Mother Nature's not able to make up her mind <laughs> this afternoon. We started with a few snowflakes in some spots and transitioned to all rain. And now, as you can see here on Storm Tracker 4, look at this. We are transitioning back into snow here. Let's uh, zoom in. And you can see if you basically go right along the I-696 corridor here, north and south right here is where this change first occurred. So you're talking about uh, Hamburg up to Green Oak Township, South Lyon up to Walled Lake into West Bloomfield there. And then farther to the south, it's mostly rain here, especially in the city of Detroit and parts of Wayne County. But notice even the snow here making it out west of US 23. So temperature wise, with all of us above freezing, the snow is going to mainly just melt on the paved surfaces. That is certainly good news. The wind is light right now as well. And notice a very slow drop in temperature this evening as all this stuff quickly comes to an end. But we're going to miss out on a really big winter storm this weekend. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, guys. Yeah. All right, Paul, this uh, marks a very big day for thousands of people affected by the water crisis in Flint because starting today, they can begin filing claims to get a piece of the more than $600 million settlement. settlement. Our uh, consumer investigator, Hank Winchester, of course, has been extensively covering this crisis from the very beginning and joins us now with more on how this money is going to be divvied up. Hank. And Devin, good evening to you. That's going to be a really interesting part of this process moving forward. How to take that 600 plus million dollars and get it to the people that need it the most in Flint. Well, today is the first day that those people have an opportunity to claim that cash. Flint, the water crisis affected thousands and the impact still being felt today. Many only use bottled water and many children who were impacted by the water crisis still feeling the effects today. They have health issues. And remember, this crisis took lives, some adults contracting Legionnaires. Yet today, a significant day for the people in that city, 
Those affected by the water crisis can begin the claims process, a chance for them to get money owed to them. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel saying the opening of the claims period marks an important part of the settlement process and one step closer to providing monetary relief to those who have endured unimaginable hardship. Yet some say the $600 plus million settlement is not enough. Karen Weaver was mayor in Flint when this all played out and made headlines around the world. I don't think the amount is, is just. I don't think the amount or the distribution is fair for the people when you look at everything that we've been through. So how will this money be divided by the people in the vehicle city? The $626 million settlement will be split up a few different ways. About 80% will go to children, 18% to adults who have had problems because of the contaminated water. Local businesses that were financially affected will get the rest of the money. You can file online or by mail, and if you need help, or have questions, a hotline has now been established. I'll make sure all of that information is posted on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. A lot of you have questions, too, surrounding the criminal case. Well, some of the defendants were in a Genesee County courtroom today, and that case has been headed up by Prosecutor Worthy here behind me inside the Frank Murphy building and her team. Uh, you may remember most of those facing charges charged more than a year ago. This case has really been bogged down by many delays, unclear when these defendants will be back in court. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank, Local 4. Hank, thank you. Detroit firefighters respond to an apartment fire on the city's west side. Sky 4 over the scene on Greenfield near Chicago and Plymouth. Light smoke could still be seen coming from a second floor unit there. Investigators are working to find out what started the fire and if anyone was hurt.